Yeah, um, as old rover Don Johnson of Durham Bandy said of horses, when you as the new man arrived on the station to start work in the 1930s, you got tried out by the old timers or the boss. They'd say, uh, can you ride, boy? You didn't pay to skite or you, you would get the worst horse to ride. Uh, bad horses that uh, had been taught to be the master by some useless man that couldn't ride a hobby horse. Horses learn very quickly to use their learned bad habits against you. When asked, I'd say, I've, I've been on horses before, that's all. The new boy usually saddled and mounted some vicious brute, generally thought to be unrideable, and got tested as an equestrian. I had ridden horses with my mother as a baby. They were my play toys. With a set of gooseneck spurs strapped on your high heel riding boots, whenever the horse bucked or fought, he got chastised. And when he came your way, he was patted on the neck. Always this show of softness with these callous brutes brought on more buck jumping, so you rode to win to beat the horse into submission. So then you might start work the day's work to the amazement of the onlookers. These horses that I rode were never ridden again by other men, for some Moorangs had beaten too many men in the past. Only a very determined rider could stay on some of these brutes. It was in the blood, you see. My mother, Tuppy, she rode a circus horse when still a teenager. This horse was a buck jumper in a tent show, and it had never been ridden bareback in the show's history. The prize offered was five pounds. Our Tuppy, crippled by polio, uh, she learned to ride before she could walk. It was different. She put her bare feet under the horse's front legs where they joined the horse's body, and it couldn't throw her. They did, she did not get the prize, though, they, that she'd earned. They reneged on pay and the deck was stacked against her, but she still rode the horse on the day. So uh, there you go, see. Um, <laughs> you may win, but you don't always get a win, eh? Anyway, old rover Don Johnson said of his 1930s visits to Tamworth. He was only about 16. I was on a trip away from Cubby visiting some of my relations in New South Wales. I was riding a creamy horse who was a bit played out. I got him off Gallopin' Jones. The creamy horse had been in his plant on a cattle drive from the Northern Territory down into Queensland. So there I was riding north from Tamworth on a slow pony. I thought I'd never get home on this horse. Anyhow, we arrived at Baraba on the outskirts of the town. There was a desperate battle going on in a ploughed paddock there was a man and a boy and the black horse and the farmer would hold the black while the boy got back into the saddle. The horse would buck and the boy tried to stay with him but the horse was too good every time. While he was, while he was being thrown three more times I was comparing mounts, mine and his. His would do nicely though a dangerous buck jumper. I said to the farmer, I can ride him mate. The farmer spoke with scorn in his voice saying I've seen you smart lads before, all mouth and that's all. OK, I offered, I'll put my saddle on the black and if I can ride him, we will swap horses. How's that suit you? The farmer laughed, thought to see some fun. I was to be the butt of the joke. He shook hands on the deal. <clears throat> so now I saddled the black. Once I'm on board with my feet firmly planted in the stirrups, I said, let him go, mate. The black tested me immediately and we bucked all over the ploughed field for 15 minutes or so. Then he started to ease up a bit, just pig rooting now. The farmer stood there with his mouth open, shaking his head. So I said, see you later, mate. Then I cantered him away through the hills towards Coverdar. I eventually arrived on Saturday morning in the town of Moree. The black and I had done battle every so often, and he was still waiting to throw me. I rode up to the hotel where my Aunt Mona worked and called out hello to her. She asked me to go down to the betting shop for a paper for her. Dirty shirt Malloy came walking by and asked him to hold me horse while I got a paper. He agreed and was about to catch the bridle when the uh, black red and struck at him. So he got me a paper instead. A piece of paper blew across the street and the horse started bucking again. A crowd gathered to watch the free show and as soon as the black eased up, a police sergeant grabbed the reins of my horse and took them off me. 
he started to lead me towards the police station, saying in his Irish brogue, We're riding horses in danger of the public. I'm arresting you, but both for life. I spurred the black in the shoulders with my gooseneck spurs, and he reared and bucked over the side, and kicking him as he left. As we left, I cantered up to the hotel and threw the paper to my aunt, called, Goodbye, mate, I jumped him into a gallop. And uh, left town, eh? We left Maureen in an awful hurry. I was making heavy going out in the mud, and several police cars gave chase, the old flippers, but they had to uh, keep to the road. At the Guaida River bridge, the police waited at the bridge to stop me from crossing. So I jumped the black into the river. It was uh, flood time, and the river was running a banker. We crossed okay, washed downstream a bit, uh, further from the police. They followed my progress in their, in their old fords, and at Ashley they were still after me, so I stayed wide of them out in the mud. So I bypassed all the towns between me and the Queensland border. Gerrard, Mungandai, etc. Back in Queensland again, after swimming the river, I bypassed Durambandi and went back to Cubby Station. The old timers still talk about the black buck jumper, a game rider and the sergeant who tried to arrest him in Moree Town over a beer at the local pub. My brother-in-law, Bill Brummel, wanted the black and offered me 20 pig snouts for him. Eventually I said, yes, but don't drive him in the sulky or you kick it to bits. I returned to the station on the following Monday morning. Bill had harnessed the black and put him in the sulky, and the black had kicked the sulky to bits. There were pieces of sulky scattered all over the horse paddock at Cubby. So I gave him back the 20 pig snouts for the dangerous black horse. Many years later, after the war, a cattle drover took him to the Territory and back in his plant. The black was uh, mustered running with the other horses that the drover owned and uh, went. After this trip that took many months, I met this drover on the stock route. I looked at his horses and saw the black amongst them. He stood out. The others were weary from being ridden hundreds of miles, but the black was pretty fresh looking. Obviously, they couldn't ride him. I claimed the black and said to them, uh, You couldn't ride him, eh? They laughed it off, saying, Oh, you can't ride him either, mate. So I put my saddle on him and he bucked around the flat and I rode him back to town. Charlie Brummel, my father in law to be, said to me, Don, I never asked you to do anything for me. Promise me never to ride this terrible horse again. So I gave the black his freedom forever. So that's how it was back in the 30s and 40s. And after the war, uh, it was a world of horses and uh, the old horses are gone. We're now on motorbikes, eh? Well, them's the brakes. Thank you by Don Johnson.